and welcome to this edition of the BoobTube Buddies Podcast, featuring our discussion of AMC's Better Call Saul, episode 8 of the third season, entitled Slip. Uh, just a couple of quick bits of information before we get into it. You can check out all of our content at www.boobtubebuddies.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Reddit, or just uh, email us at boobtubebuddies at gmail.com to get in on the conversation. Uh, we're going to make sure that all your questions, thoughts, theories, everything like that get on air. Uh, so let's go ahead and get down to it. Uh, I am. My name is Foxman, and I'm joined by the JC to my Justin. What up, Giblets? Ooh, foreshadowing. Dee. I'm glad I wasn't the drumstick to your walking space. What does that mean? Oh, okay. Yeah, Slippin' Jimmy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that is pretty good. Thanks. Uh, so this week's episode is entitled Slip, which I think has obviously to do with that. Uh, next week's episode is entitled Fall. So I'm kind of curious to Ooh. see like if there's some sort of cause and effect thing to do with it. Might or the Fall of Chuck. You think so? I hope so. <laughs> I always hope so. I, I am curious to see how that plays out because it's certainly making it look like he is trying his best to make like his big grand comeback but i like he's being cautioned uh by his doctor and then also howard comes to tell him there's some shit going wrong with his mal uh what is malpractice malpractice insurance yeah that's gonna be really exciting i can't wait to see his face when he realizes <laughs> what the fuck jimmy did now. i can't wait <laughs> um okay so just uh to let you guys know what we got going on this episode uh obviously we're gonna talk about the episode a little bit and then uh we have are a we bit... really <laughs> yeah no oh my gosh shocking <laughs> uh we're also uh, gonna do a little bit of trivia two truths and one big little lie uh and then we are debuting a new song and uh we've been gone two weeks so we had tons of time to work on it <laughs> by tons of time i mean an hour before the podcast literally not even exaggerating one hour <laughs> no yeah um but it's actually pretty goddamn good and it's a duet which is not something you guys normally get to hear us do yeah we like to duet <laughs> so- <laughs> Uh, okay so uh going off of that sweet note let's go ahead and jump into our first segment of the night 140 characters or less used to summarize the entire episode a little segment that we like to call summon it up in a tweet oh yeah we're summing it up so summon it up summon it up oh yeah we're summing it up oh yeah we're summing it up so summon it up summon it up summon it up and up Yet again, after another revision, I've got exactly 140 characters. Good for you. How, how many was it? Because I bet it was 160. It was before. only 158, so <laughs> way the fuck off. <laughs> All right. All right, what you got, my friend? Another slow go. Setting up next show. Slippin' Jimmy got flow. High stakes switcheroo from Nacho. Chuck's condition is better than Buffo. <laughs> Hashtag... Kim is a sexy hoe. Oh my god. Uh, what a massage nest you are. Oh no. <laughs> That's not funny. Um, <laughs> okay, here's mine. <clears throat> Jimmy gets to slipping and ripping on the power tripping bitch. Chuck fights the itch. Mike's sneaky rich. And Kim gives the ditch to Mesa to give Howard his licks. And that is summing it up in a tweet. Show, show. Damn, Fizzle got bars. <laughs> uh, Jimmy's not the only one with flow, am I right? I liked it. I was going to call you out on being the massage but then I realized the bitch you were talking about is actually a guy. So yeah, fuck. yep. I, you know, I try to spread it around pretty evenly. Yeah, you do. <laughs> is that F- Floozy Foxman? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, okay, let's, let's just go ahead and get into it a little bit. I'm going to throw this out there. Might be a hot take. Not a huge fan of pretty much any of the throwback scenes to young Jimmy. What are you talking about? The very first scene with him and his chubbo friend from back in the day, who is Todd from Last Man on Earth. Oh, okay, yeah. What so, I completely forgot about the opening scene. Okay, this is what I tell you to write down. Goddamn, I don't need notes. I have a perfect it's photographic a memory. <laughs> yeah, what what was that? I mean, I, I guess they're just setting up a little side pre story. I, I it just none of it ever feels like it's totally necessary to me. Yeah, because I, I was actually confused as to whether or not that was 
in real time or because he's having money troubles and and instantly you see him digging around exactly he's so desperate he drove back to chicago to get like 37 (laughs) 37 cents cents. (laughs) no but then he was freezing when the cops were driving by because i i was thinking of the pre-trial diversion situation so yeah but i mean we've seen that guy before and that that's like a past friend yeah for sure but I just it just does nothing for yeah, me. Yeah, I don't. I mean, that's why I, th- I can only imagine they're setting up something for the future because otherwise it didn't play into this episode whatsoever. No, it didn't. Uh, I guess the only thing that it did is Kim is the one who works hard, does everything by the books, and that can be kind of likened a little bit to how he describes his father is a guy who cares does it did everything right right but he he was soft and that's why he didn't make it yeah so and then we see now that jimmy is really starting to slip into Into old soul yeah yeah i mean like i love it i love every second of it (laughs) yeah the more soul it becomes the happier well he does it full on with the drumstick tripping and then he uh, does it again basically when he threatens the guy who's on a power trip definitely transforming yeah yeah um so anyway okay so let's let's skip past that uh mike with the metal detector scene uh i told you what i thought my theory was which that the the hand that's in there that this is the dead body from the lady who's in the the support group yeah yeah i don't know that's i I hope that's not it because that i feel is gonna be a stretch yeah like because i'm assuming this has something to do with that one thing he needed from nacho because that's why they showed that preview in the beginning. Yeah. So, and he pulled out, you know, some paper sh- telling him. So, I think that's whatever information Nacho gave him. And I think it's going to be way too coincidental if Nacho happened to know who killed this random person's husband. And yeah. he, and he drew that connection himself how. I really I really so, don't know. I'm really hoping that's not it, but Did the lady be. in the support group say something about how her husband used to write like take notes on things? Like could that be his diary about where he used to travel to or anything? Maybe. I, I have to I go back know. and rewatch. Okay, gotcha. But yeah, I have uh, no way, fucking clue whose hand that could be. I mean, really the only good thing about it is we got a metal detector. Montage! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like I actually <laughs> like how they did that scene. I like all of the montages. Yeah. Even the ones where I don't necessarily give a shit about what's happening. Right. I pretty much always like a good montage. Plus, I like that there was like six mics. That was like a dream world for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. six mics and zero chucks. Yes. <laughs> Plus, I love metal detecting and stuff like that. Me and Lennon go all the time. You go metal detecting? All the time. You have a metal detector? Yeah, a really you have nice two? one. Yeah. You have two metal detectors. Uh-huh. Where do you metal detect? The beach. So, you and your son just go beach combing for coins? It's badass. What have you ever found? What's the best thing you've ever found? Uh, we only went once. <laughs> 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 it was just a pain in the ass because we found a bunch of bottle caps. It was a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Flip flops like that. Wow, what a story. The truth comes out. I don't even know what to believe anymore. <laughs> no, what I'm saying now is the truth. We, I do have all that shit, but we only went once. And did you buy all the stuff? Yeah. How much did it cost? Lots. You know how I am with my hobbies. How, like, wait, I, no. How much did both metal detectors all, cost? Well, I got the two metal detectors and then this little wave thing. I got a lot of equipment. All in all, probably about 500 bucks. And you went one time? We're going to go again. When did you last go? Months. How many months? Six. Last, so it was last year? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> You're the it's worst. It's too fucking hot. I can't do anything outside. You're the worst. It was not too hot. Okay, whatever. Let's let's move on. <laughs> okay, so uh, we we see Chuck at the house with his doctor. Uh, do you watch Veep at all? Obviously not, because it's not. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Right. Or The Bachelor. Wait, no, no what is Big it? Brother. Big dude. Brother. I have standards. I have standards. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is uh, this is Selena Meyer, which is Elaine Bennis from Seinfeld. Right. It's uh, it's her daughter-in-law, kind of. That doctor is Elaine's daughter. Daughter-in-law. I don't think that age difference works out. It it looks like it works out on the show a oh, little okay. bit better. Right. Although, like, her daughter looks like she's in her late 20s, whereas that lady in the show looks like she's in her late 30s. But Selena looks like she could be, which is Elaine, looks like she could be in her mid-50s. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which I think is probably what she actually is. Wow, really? I oh, think yeah, so. I guess, yeah. Huh. Yep. Time um, flies. <laughs> yeah. So, what did you didn't feel at all bad for him here? Like for who? 
We've been on so many tangents, I don't even know what we... For Chuck. You did not feel at all bad that... There's never a time where I feel bad for Chuck at all. Actually, when he was walking through the grocery store, I was praying for his nose to start bleeding or some kind of fucking crazy meltdown. I was really saddened that it didn't happen. So you didn't feel bad at all when he was telling the story about how it was proven in public that his disease is psychosomatic (laughs) and that, like... And then he's just saying, like... What have I done? Like, yeah, if it's not real, what have I done? I, I wish you had looked over me. I was beaming during that story. <laughs> I, was I was so happy that he's realizing what a fucktard he is for the last 10 a years. Fucked- oh, my God. I hate him with a fiery passion. Now, do you really hate him or do you actually really like him? He's my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So one of the best scenes in this entire episode is Jimmy. I think Wait a minute. We never rated the episode. What did you think? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You are 100 percent right. (laughs) Um, I thought it was like a seven and a half, maybe a seven. I only threw a seven. It was gonna be a six point five, but then I really liked the Gus. You know, Mike. But that was so small. It was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, seven and a half seems really generous. It is very generous. That's a shame. Yeah, and they had two weeks. What do you think about this season in total so far? I mean, it's been great except for the last episode and this episode. I feel like it's been I really yeah I, I like, like the, I mean there's some good I mean I'm enjoying it I yeah. like Better Call Saul it's just that there hasn't been and listen I'm not like some fucking slack jawed mongrel that just needs like give me more action <laughs> just like Michael Bay films yeah like just explosions <laughs> everywhere um but I I just there has not been a lot that has been incredibly gripping. I mean the 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 court scene the court scene was was awesome. awesome. It's instantly something that you can go to, and then like some little bits like Mike pulling off of his his little stunt that got the guys caught at the border patrol. Yes, that was awesome. That was definitely cool, and uh, just little scenes here and there. But overall, I don't know. It's a little underwhelming. I feel like it's just taking longer than we want to progress to whatever it's culminating into. And that's a reasonable request because I mean, yes, you got to learn to love the ride, but there there still has to be like things to see out the window when you're on your way there. For sure, and they're still so underutilizing Gus. Absolutely. He still only had I think in total in the season maybe what 15 minutes of camera time. Yeah, I mean, he's really like a Gus fringe character. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Okay, I think that that is a good transition, actually, into our first and, I'm going to say it, best segment of the night. I don't know. I've got a pretty powerful two truths. <laughs> <laughs> this better be our best fucking segment, because uh, my summing up in a tweet fucking blue. Yeah, so. it's going to be lame. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's kick over to Jib Jab with Jables. Uh, let's not even introduce it afterwards, just intro straight into it. Sounds it'll good? speak for itself. Okay. Jib Jab. Ladies and gentlemen, Chip Jab with Jables. You better call Saul. Take the fall better. You better call 
Nassau. You better call Saul. If you get caught and you have the wherewithal, you better, better, better you better call Saul. Okay, so uh, so what did you think of our little song, buddy? Dude, I mean, I have ears, so obviously liquid gold. <laughs> okay, so whether you absolutely love the song or absolutely loathed the song, let me put a little bit into perspective here. Uh, Jables wrote all the lyrics, so if you loved it, uh, then you have Jables to think. If you fucking hated it, go on to our YouTube page. <laughs> oh, don't you do it. <laughs> go I'm on done. to our YouTube page and leave us some nasty comments. You'll feel right at home when you see all the rest oh, of them there. stop. There's more than one. I thought you only shared the... Oh, no. No, generally speaking, our YouTube comments are um, are always <laughs> extremely negative. Are they really? <laughs> um, I'm so glad I don't look at them. I wouldn't do that again. What's funny is uh, our YouTube numbers over the last few months have pretty much equaled our podcast numbers, or at least started coming close to it. Yikes. But the comments that we get on all of our social media and uh, and SoundCloud, everything. Positive. All, all positive. But YouTube sucks? Well, YouTube is an honest to God, I do not mean anything nasty to anybody watching this on YouTube, but it's kind of like where the incels of the internet go to hide. You know what I mean? Like, and and I don't, if you're listening and you know, you have a girlfriend or you don't have a girl, whatever it is, that's fine. But it's kind of like where like the people go that like, you know, can't get their willies wet. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying insulting. That's not insulting. I'd be insulted. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the song. Um, and to all the YouTube people listening out Fuck there. Fuck you. Oh Jesus! Oh, no. I, I was gonna say going. welcome to the fold. Oh, I mean, welcome to the welcome to the fold. <laughs> <laughs> also, side note: uh, we will be putting up a bloopers episode at the end. And it's going to have the 8,000 takes Foxman <laughs> took to get those harmonies on It's going to, going to, going to. The final product sounded pretty good, but man, totally. there were a lot of heinous. Sweating like, balls in that <laughs> garage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try oh after God. try after try of the same horrible note. <laughs> Breaking the fucking windows with how bad it sounded. Oh, God. Okay, so back to the show. Um, let's talk about the good, well, the music shop. Um, which we probably could have used some equipment from that to <laughs> enhance our recording. Totally. Um, but uh, but so so, what do you think about those douchebags? Fuck those guys. Yeah, I I was so happy that that's really when he did slip in Jimmy because they had to come in times a million. I mean, I was so fucking angry at those two. I agree. I will say that I could use a little bit more subtlety on the people that Saul's fucking over there because they're making it way too easy for us to just to say like them. well he this like yeah, these two had dudes it they, yeah they only had themselves to blame <laughs> if you'd have been there if you'd have seen it i bet you you would have done the same pop six squish cicero lipschitz i got a lot i'm so of them. proud of you yeah. for remembering this because your face dude you look so i was worried. deer in a headlight i was like shit i already started now i'm gonna have to have a song um but uh but you do you get what i'm saying like everybody's yeah, totally. fucking over it's, it's just too obvious it's like, the same sort of principle as that bar scene where everyone was way exaggerated yes. buffoonery yes it, it's like uh like like stage writing a little bit it's it's like they're they're probably pandering to the lowest common denominator but that's a problem because the show is not designed exactly like that. Yeah, yeah so when i see really moments like that like it's and i'm not even like you guys listen to the show here like i mean we mostly like dick around about the shows like i don't have like <laughs> a lot the most, of times are confused about a lot of things <laughs> i don't have a lot of in-depth insight or anything like that like i'm not a f- film student or anything but you don't so, need like, to be spoon fed the I, fucking that's, plot <laughs> that's how it is yeah i don't need to be spoon fed the plot like yes we're supposed to root for this guy and it's okay that he screwed these guys i'd like a little bit more nuance to it yeah i mean they, they didn't they could have been half the dicks they were and i still would have been all for him doing that I will say he really sold the fall. 
Yeah, that was. A, I feel bad for that, that stuntman. Stunt Dude, it has to be. I'm surprised that stuntman's even walking. Yeah, he fell with such velocity with a plum. <laughs> I I have to say, I was like legit impressed with the fall. Like, yes. I mean, it takes it takes a lot for me to notice a fall on a TV show of all things. <laughs> and like, I was sitting there like, bravo. Yeah. He like bounced off the ground. Like he threw himself in. It, it was intense <laughs> for sure. Um, and anything else you want to unpack on that scene? Uh, I like that he got his guitar. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> that was really, bam, bam, that's bam. the one that they were talking. That was, that guitar was referenced in a couple episodes back. Oh, that's right. He said something, and then, uh, but wasn't it something about Pink Floyd? And then the the one kid says like something. Oh, that's the band that did the out here in the field. Yeah, it, it was, but it was something like un- that. Underappreciated, so he got the guitar that you know yeah. now is in a good home. Uh, honestly, anybody out there who listening who actually knows like what band that guitar is from or what guitar player, I'd be genuinely interested to hear it. So. Please write in. Like, even if it's not to share for other people, I would like to hear that. Wouldn't you? I would. I already know the person that's going to know the answer. Who? He said not to name drop. Nanners? No, he lives in Vietnam. Oh, Rocks? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what up, Rocks? Um, so, <laughs> let's see. The, the Mesa Verde meeting scene. Okay, so... Uh, I fucking loved the way that Kim gave it right back Holy to shit, Howard. I was so fucking proud of her. Howard, please sit. <laughs> she pushes ass down. Yeah. He tried, she had her hand on his shoulder, went right back down. To be fair, he came over fucking rude as cock to yeah. her. Like, I, I'm so glad she didn't just swallow that. And t- I was pissed when she first got up. I thought she was going out to like get a cigarette or something. Yeah. Like, I was really disheartened, but then when she did exactly what she did, agreed. I mean, kudos. Because I was thinking when he first came over, I was like, got, talk to her like she's a fucking dog. Yeah, like literally just sit, Kim, sit. Yeah, not <laughs> not like yeah, like please like keep stay yeah. seated or something like that. Literally <laughs> don't worry just about sit. It. Yeah, sit, and then shakes the other two's hands. Says it's so nice to see you. Doesn't say anything else. Yeah, it was very uncalled for. Yeah, super unprofessional. Passive aggressive. Yes. Um. Yeah. So I I like that scene, and then when. And he comes outside afterwards and like, what the hell was that? And it was cool to hear like that he's literally out there and all he's been doing for the last few weeks is damage yes. control because Chuck fucked their reputation. <laughs> I love I love all everything about that except for and it's the same I hate when like you're at dinner and people are like, Oh, let me get this, let me get this and fighting over a check. It's that same thought I fucking hated that she gave him that big ass check. I fucking hated that he ripped it up. And there's just all this big money that no one seems to care about. Like, why can't they just send that my way? <laughs> you know, I'll take it. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, I I thought that the scene was uh, was just a really good little like justice porn sort yes. of thing. Like she was able to give it back to him, and he he, he had kept coming really back with zings too. That's like, what I'm saying. Really good. You know, and she was just on it. Your debt is absolved and forgiven, but anything else is on you, and just instantly will. Fucking this back is on you. I forgot exactly what she said, but she had a really nice singer. And that's back on you. Whatever that is. Uh, yeah, I like your version. She was so sassy. He, he said this, and then she was like, nah. I really like whatever she said. It was perfect. <laughs> Memorable. Okay, um, another montage, by the way. Fake pill. Montage. <laughs> I like that as well, but I did not think that he needed the fucking huge magnifying glass i mean when it panned out i could see exactly what he was still doing yeah he looked like milton from uh from office space <laughs> um i, I just my... need my, my ibuprofen <laughs> why is he putting ibuprofen in there i was confused about what was happening maybe it's some blend of things is it or, may, or maybe those pills are like you know oh need we're to so have. stupid of course that's what it is okay, of course so... he's ba- he's replacing those pills uh, with things that will not uh, have the same effect and will not treat his stuff. Right. But could still, I mean, but the ibuprofen, maybe it, I don't know. Okay, because if he put something in like what Walt puts in, like how is how is he going to get it past like a toxicology report? Oh, that's true. You know? Yeah, because when they run that, it's just simple aspirin. I'm sure he's probably taking aspirin at some point. Yeah, and I don't think that that would even pull up aspirin. Right. Yeah, why would, why would you be looking for... 
I love that we're talking about it like we know like we're anything about that. I can't remember my favorite line that Kim just said. <laughs> <laughs> that we don't even diving into pharmaceuticals. Uh, okay, so um, let's see. It, Chuck at the grocery store, a- anything that you found interesting in that scene? I found it interesting, but nothing ever happened. I yeah. just wanted him to just collapse. I hate that he's getting better. I, I really do. <laughs> oh, my I mean, God, you monster. Come on. What, you're on soft on Chuck on me now? No, no, no. I don't like Chuck either. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just have this fear that he's just going to get back to normal, back in the courtroom, and stick it to Jimmy somehow. Mm, I don't know. You don't think it's going to get that far? Yeah, I think that if it does, then he'll have another huge fucking meltdown. That's what I'm, that's what I'm praying for. Yeah, but, okay, anyway, let's... uh. Then let's talk about um, about Kim at the office with Jimmy. And this is actually another situation that's kind of like the give the check, rip up the check thing. Because Yes, it happened like, all the time. I was pissed at that again. And it's just a shame that, uh, that Jimmy's pride is, is sitting there getting in the way. Because Kim could afford to pay it and he yeah. could do something enriching. You know what I mean? Like, or enriching? Yes. Um, like, for example, like just focus on his community service stuff or go out and maybe, I don't know, get some sort of extra certification that can help him yes, like, exactly. with his law degree when he comes back. A or, couple extra initials at the end of his name. Exact Something along those lines that yeah. he could be doing. And ha- where are they at right now? Because they didn't seem romantic fucking at all. Well, no, because she's been so busy working on all the stuff. He even says, like, yeah, I just saw you when you came in for the, like, uh, clean pair of clothes because oh, okay. remember because he was like no that was the day before yesterday yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's obvious that she's been burning the candles at both ends mm. probably the only time that they see each other is during the infamous stinkle pop scenes <laughs> there wasn't a stinkle pop today no i know it was sad that was very sad it was very sad would you tell the listeners my new uh gamer tag <laughs> in case they're looking for me on xbox one that is true uh because we, we I graduated from 420 yeah so uh so do you want to tell the story about how okay no i'll tell it yeah you're a better okay. storyteller okay so uh, first off by the way if you ever want to play rocket league or overwatch i'm fox dash man and uh and jables spelled over out here. fox d-a-s-h yes 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 uh for a decade jables has been lord space jables 420 and <laughs> uh, and then so it led to some awkward conversations or you were afraid it was going to lead to awkward conversations with my son with yes. his son yeah. so uh so at first you know he wanted to change it to lord jable 6969 <laughs> uh but then he realized that might lead to some even weirder questions so what did you settle on buddy i didn't settle on anything i gained the coolest gamer tag of all time in Brrr. Stinkle popper. <laughs> <laughs> so add me, play with me, make fun of me. <laughs> All right, that seems like a pretty good lead-in for uh, for our next and final segment of the night. Uh, two truths and one big little lie. Let's play a game called Two Truths and One Big Little Lie. All right, as the reigning supreme... Wait a minute. Right. <laughs> I was trying to do a record scratch. Didn't I? <laughs> it sounded like a door opening really slowly. <laughs> um, yes, we are tied now after a full fucking season of this guy sitting up in his goddamn tower. I got us back down on evil... Pl- Evil playing field? <laughs> God damn I it. see your intention. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, this is actually a really big week for it, which is a shame because my two truths and one big little lie sucks a big Mine... bag of dicks. <laughs> Mine sucks a big bag of vaginas, so we'll see the battle of the sexes. Oh, <laughs> cool, cool. Okay, what you got? Well, I do want to you know, tell everybody that we agreed to this week do two truths and one big little quote. I mean, it's still two truths and one big little lie. It's just quotes edition. Okay. Because, I mean, yeah, because two of them are true, one of them's false. Right. Okay, there you go. So, I did mine on Mike. Okay. Because he's my fave. <laughs> and this, of course, is spanning the entire Breaking you know, Bad. Right. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Gotcha. So, <clears throat> quote one. I'm sorry. Can you do it with a little bit more gusto? Gustavo? Fring! <laughs> <laughs> quote one. Nice. How about we lose the sunglasses? I feel like I'm talking to Jackie Onassis. 
Okay. Quote two. I'll give you this. Either all of us or none of us are going home. Quote three. You didn't know your place. Your ego got the best of you, and no amount of money can undo what you just did. Okay, I'm going to say that one is what he says to Lydia, and three is what he says to Walt, and I'm just going to guess that two is true. That is not correct. God damn it. Okay, set me straight. What happened? Uh, he said, I'll give you this, either all of us or none of us are going home to Jesse Pinkman. Okay. And I just pulled the last one out of thin air. Was the I first ju- one to Lydia? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and I, yeah, I just basically gathered what he would have. I, I pretended there was a conversation to Walt and that's something like he would have said. That's something. really good. Thanks. Buddy. That is really sneaky. Way better than mine. You, yeah? you brought the thunder <laughs> and I mean, it would take an absolute fucking jagweed to get mine wrong. So. I, I love how you do that. All right. So, um, <laughs> so you did Mike and I figured, uh, keep it kind of in the same sort of subplot. Okay, and, uh, okay. and so I went with Gus. Fring, you know, yes. <laughs> uh, Quote one. A man is rarely that which is seen. He is what he hides. Quote two. And one needs to learn to be rich. To be poor, anyone can manage. Quote three. If you have a complaint, I suggest you submit it through our email system. I'd be happy to refer you to our website. Uh, I know for sure two is what he said. I actually used that on like three podcasts ago. Of course. Uh. (laughs) See, that's the problem when you said the quotes edition. I went through and I was like, man... Jables has covered every single fucking one of these. <laughs> and then I was like, and that's why he told me that's what he wanted to do this week. <laughs> I told you we didn't have to. That was a jumping off point. No, you piece of shit sack of goddamn crap yeah, liar. I'm always the authoritative one that, that dictates and puts down the rules. <laughs> Shut up. And Bear, take it easy. <laughs> All right, so can you read the first quote again for me? Yes, I'll just go through them like quickly, quickly. You don't need to do the second one, I know for sure. Though. Okay, I'll do one and three. A man is really... God damn it. Is that your Gus voice? <laughs> a man is rarely that which is seen. He is what he hides. True three. <laughs> Quote three. <laughs> Jesus. If you have a complaint, I suggest you submit it through our email system. I'd be happy to refer you to our website. Hefe. Fuck. Both of those sound legitimate. <sighs> um, I'm going to go with... <laughs> <laughs> the fuck noise is that, that fox, man? My dog honking in the background. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just going to go with one being not true. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, you are correct. No, yeah! <laughs> yeah, back in the lead. I told you you'd have to be oh, fucking stupid. Yeah. I almost picked three, too. Yeah, no, two and three are true. He has actually said those. And one is just like a random quote that I pulled from online. Oh, so it is a quote that somebody said? It's an actual quote. and By somebody in Breaking Bad or just nope. somebody, nope. somebody it's somewhere? It's a quote that I pulled up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Because he said shit about... Uh, you know what a man does and it's something about providing for the family that's so I why that was yeah of... when i when i saw that i thought it sounds like something that he'd say because he talks about yeah. like what a man is exactly, and things like yeah. that and that what a man a wants and what a man needs and whatever happy all right what... all right well it's nice and comfy back on this pedestal <laughs> pedestal i mean what am i on a pedestal in your tower what did i say in your clouds no just a pedestal <laughs> a pedestal why do you say pedestal a pedestal it's a pedestal like yeah, stool. Not stool. No. Not, not. Why would it be a pedestal? It's a stool you stand with your pets. <laughs> <laughs> and that is two truths and one big little lie. And one big little lie. All right, so my buddy's back on his petty stool, and <laughs> we, <laughs> we are going to finish off the episode by talking about the last couple of scenes here so um uh let's see we have uh we don't need to talk about the whole howard and chuck thing nothing happens there let's t- okay we got to talk about the nacho fucking mission impossible what happened, scene didn't, uh we do the um community service thing yet or does that come after uh that comes after okay yeah we'll go so nacho doing his mission impossible thing first off he fucking parkours up to Ooh. the roof uh, punctures the AC <laughs> thing and he's sitting good idea the, yeah yeah good idea good idea um and we don't need to go into like full recap mode here but 
Oh my god, it was so fucking tense. I was sweating fucking blood. I promise, I like your couch probably has like claw marks in it because I was getting visibly uncomfortable. Uh, while me doing too. This it, it was it, like absolutely challenging. Like I was cringing, and I looked over at you, and you were cringing out of your fucking <laughs> skeletal system, dude. Not it's nothing. <laughs> that, that's nothing. I was trying to see. This is what happens you when I do set up. Joke for yeah, you. I can't set up jokes. I have to tell Did them you on the fly. Down? I wrote it down, but it doesn't Let's mean shit. It. What did I write down? I wrote down uh, Rocket League trade. <laughs> <laughs> I try to work that in. It's I'm not, not even going to explain what the joke is to everybody, but I'm just going to say what happens is Jables is constantly, constantly quipping during the show. <laughs> I mean, just nonstop zingers, and I'm always saying, save it for the podcast. And then I always force him to do at least one of them on the podcast. Way fucking flat. (laughs) Because out of context, I mean, it's just absolutely horrible. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, if if everybody was watching this live while we talked over it. And also lived our lives and understood the (laughs) Rocket League trading thing. (laughs) That's a small requirement to understand my jokes. So the only person that's going to think I'm funny is you. (laughs) What's the point of even turning the mic on then? (laughs) Because it'd be really weird to just have this conversation in this in blanket, blanket fort, fort with you and I <laughs> <laughs> step into my blanket. Oh, <laughs> Let's god. oh my god! Okay, so so yeah, he successfully swaps out all the stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I think right, like I don't know. I was still I was waiting for Tio. I always want to call him Tio, but I was waiting for Hector to uh, you know like just look up or something me like too something just something. To, or or not even new or just, just something yeah, to make you wonder yeah to to have him have some bit of something so if something comes back you know he's like oh wait that one time yeah the toss at the end was fucking ballsy oh i hate oh i still even thinking about it i feel like i need a xanax yeah. like I didn't like how it was. Uh, I felt like he was a little loud with the pills pouring out. Like, yeah, it was seriously like he was like uh, like he was mixing a can of like uh, Tic Tacs on one of those paint mixer things at Lowe's. <laughs> yeah. It was so loud. It was very loud. Uh, okay, final scene. Um, actually, no, it's not the final scene. It's the final scene that I wrote down before my computer died. <laughs> oh no! If it's in my hands, it, it is. Might as well it's be the it's fucking going final to be. Scene. So penultimate scene is Jimmy doing his community service, and this is when Love he the fucking that. sticks it to that dude. And can I just say? How big is this drug deal that this other, like, loser is doing that $700, like, is chump change compared to what he's about to make on this deal? How'd you know he's a drug dealer? Because Saul says it. Or Jimmy says it. Jimmy says what? He says, like, uh, like, I know what you did. I know what you're doing. It rhymes with, like, rug stealing. No, he said it rhymes with mug, mug, mug mealing. Okay, what is the difference? I thought it was drug either... dealing. Oh, I was figuring out whether he was a bug feeler or a rug stealer. <laughs> okay, so, so that's a successful one yeah, that you wrote down. Up. Yeah, that was pretty I good. I pretended like I was wondering. No, you were playing dumb very well. Yes. I, it, it, it really helps that like uh, I can buy you in that role. You know? <laughs> Not too far fetched. <laughs> you spent the whole episode conning me with all your dumb little things that you did. Nailed it. <laughs> Fucking Worth 4D. Wrong. Chess over here. <laughs> uh, Rug feeler. <laughs> How did Saul know that uh, that he had all, like thousands of dollars in his shoe? Was that he I walking don't, strangely? I don't. I don't know that I was. I don't even know how he knew he was a drug dealer because I bought his story. I bought his story too. <laughs> but but then again, we're not. I, well, I mean, I was gonna say we're not scumbags, but one of us isn't. Not me. Not it. God damn it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fucking jinx. Personal jinx. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> God damn it. nailed it okay okay so um, anything else you want to unpack here other than it was nice to see him finally like the, the like, fucking guy over yes there. like that dude getting his comeuppance was something we needed to see yeah but it is i mean i do want to know what kind of transaction that guy was planning on doing to pay somebody seven hundred dollars to go do a deal. He, he like, had to have been made he had to have been making minimum five grand for that to make any sense right yeah i mean yeah and and what has to be done right then or it doesn't get done like not i mean from what my friends have told me when people want their drugs they're gonna get them 
you know, Whenever if, they if get someone them. has to wait till their dealer is off of fucking work, then they wait till the dealer's off. Yeah, work. Yeah, but maybe it's for him. It's about going and getting like a, like his supply of stuff, and oh, he yeah, can maybe only that's get why it. He had the thousands in his sock. Yeah, hmm. right. Maybe. Well, again, I just wish Nanners was watching this. Listen, oh my so God, she Nanners! Where have know. you gone? Maybe if we pan it to Kelly Choi, she'll explain shit to oh us. Oh my God, Kelly, Kelly Choi, Choi! Please, will you explain some things? She's I mean, got a good head on her shoulders. She, she does have a good head on, on her shoulders. It's just two fucking chuds over here trying to <laughs> waddle their way through the episode. What happened during the show? <laughs> Let's make a podcast about what we don't know. <laughs> Let's hit record and tell inside jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to that. Oh. Uh, um, Okay, so final scene. This is all you, buddy, because my computer died. Uh, let me get my notes out. Mike gets more money. Mike and Gus talk status. <laughs> <laughs> and that summed it up in a tweet. <laughs> he also wrote it with a crayon and all the, like, the, the Ks are backwards. <laughs> no, I really like that. I like how uh, Gus is just such a fucking good guy. He's yeah, such a great he's a character. class act. Yeah, um, so he's got $200,000 that he needs to have what have laundered. Essentially, he wants that money to be able to legitimately be turned into something that can uh, be bequeathed onto his uh, da- well, daughter-in-law and granddaughter when Which he dies. Which is a big part of what he was trying to do throughout the Baking, baking Bad, <laughs> about the Breaking Bad series, remember? Because he was always trying Constantly to... trying to legitimize. Right, right, right. Yeah. I feel like it wouldn't be too hard to do that with $200,000. Okay, he explain. I mean, you go to the casino. I, I mean, I would just all I make, you know, 10, 20 trips to the casino, spend some hours there, make it look like I'm doing stuff, and then just say that's how I accumulated all my winnings. Because they only require you, they only require you report your winnings if it's over, at least in Florida, if it's over two thousand dollars. So you can go there and win. Oh yeah, you have to go a lot more than twenty times. Yeah. Well, still. I, he could go daily, right? Yeah. He's, that's, we I mean, don't know what the fucking law is, especially not in New Mexico. Yeah, that's true. Well, I feel like in New Mexico, probably even less, you know, even, you know, more lenient about your winnings because fucking Vegas is right there. Yeah, but New Mexico isn't where Vegas is. Yeah, but it's close. It's not close to Nevada? I mean, it, does that matter? Why should proximity matter? So... <laughs> it, that's the most insane argument I've heard in my entire life. Now get off your pedestal. <laughs> so two states have to have like very similar laws if they're, they're geographically close. linked. <laughs> uh, uh, Kelly, just, Kelly, Choi, Choi, please weigh in. I just feel like two hundred thousand is not an insurmountable amount to have laundered, especially for somebody who seems so well informed like mike does and if nothing else why not just bury it in their new backyard and leave you know some kind of trail yeah no yeah you hate all my ideas that's a bad one why is it a bad one that see you need a gus ring it's bare in the backyard that's that's stupid what could happen? Because the whole problem is, is then she's gonna have two hundred thousand dollars that she needs to find somebody to help her launder or she can use it slowly to pay off stuff cash. Yeah. See, that's the thing is if I had $200,000 cash, I wouldn't need to go out and buy a new car. That's like, I guess I make enough money and waste enough money where $200,000 could just plug holes for a while. That's exactly. That's exactly. <laughs> it would keep me straight for like three full years. Just patching those little oversights. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. I just get, I'd buy a lot more keys in Rocket League. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's uh, let's let's wrap it up here. Is no, we're there... going so strong. Why, why are you going to put a close on this? <laughs> is there is there any other things that you want to cover with the episode? Any general overall thoughts? Or... Let me check my notes here. Oh, Gus says I won't take money from your family. Okay. That was All right. nice. Nice. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> this just in. <laughs> so uh thank you guys as always very much for tuning in. Um uh, we have Fargo, Sensate, American Gods, Twin Peaks, and uh we're gonna have a House of Cards episode up this week too. And then my god, we have a lot more coming out. We're first off we'll be hitting our one year anniversary later this month. Ooh. Uh yep, and we'll be restarting uh season two of preacher so it's our first like 
for like covered season one now we're on season two sort of show as well because it's Ooh. yeah first year anniversary so uh it's all pretty exciting uh we also have our patreon page uh even a dollar really helps basically all of the funds that we get from that just go right back into the podcast into trying to uh in, like uh, optimize our audio sounds uh to be able to get the podcast out to more people things hey like that. for better cope co-hosts <laughs> yep to better um better pedestals <laughs> <Gosh, damn it. laughs> um but anyway uh I'll, I'll get down off my pedestal and i will let you do what you like to do best uh buddy would you like to tie a bow on this bitch i would right after i want to ask the listeners to go ahead and write in and let foxman know how bad everybody wants a podcast covering big brother <laughs> So if that's the case, right on in. If not, we'll see you next time, little buddies.